It is a typical morning for the Gemma and her crew. They are bound for the fishing grounds off Cape Cod, hoping for a catch that will please their customers. The catch is 30, 35, they'll be happy, big ones. Bigger the better. The prospect of catching 30 to 35 fish wouldn't get most fishermen out on the water. But the Gemma is fishing for science, and the catch is headed not for the market, but for the Woods Hole Marine Biological Laboratory. Specifically, what we're looking for out here today is a place that we're likely to find squid. The squid will be collected and taken back to the lab, and they'll be studied for hints on diseases into the human nervous system. We have to take off most of it, the body mass, to get down to the giant axon, which is on the mantle surface. By studying the nerve mechanics of squid, researchers have learned a lot about illnesses ranging from Alzheimer's to Lou Gehrig's disease. The squid has some special properties. The first is the size of this uh, nerve fiber. You can actually see the nerve itself. And that's many times bigger than the nerve cells in our own bodies. The squid's nerve fiber is so large, early marine biologists mistook it for a blood vessel. When they figured out it was the way information is carried throughout the body, scientists began unlocking secrets that go far beyond the squid. It's what we learn in the squid has direct applications to um, human cells. The squid off Cape Cod are much more than a species for scientific study. This particular species here around Woods Hole uh, is fished commercially along the northeast coast. It's the fourth most valuable fishery in the northeast. Every year, fishermen take $35 million worth of squid from these waters, and there are some concerns over how much is too much. The fisheries managers who are also here in Woods Hole are very concerned that here we have fishermen who are targeting squids that aggregate to spawn. To get a better idea how to maintain a healthy squid population, Roger Hanlon has spent years prying into and photographing the sex life of squid, including a character known as the sneaker male. Now there's a couple in front and you're gonna see a fast action just here, right there, at very high speed, right there. He grabs the female. And the question to me is, when she lays this egg that is about the size of a human finger, has 100 to 200 eggs in it, uh, who gets the fertilizations, or at least most of the fertilization? What Hanlon has been most concerned about is whether fishing pressures might diminish genetic diversity to the point that entire squid populations become unsustainable. Keeping that from happening is where things like the sneaker male come in. That's very good news because that means that the squids are moving their genes around at a maximal rate and that's how the reproductive system has evolved is they have a lot of flexibility and a lot of gene flow and gene mixing in each population of squids. Studying the behavior, the reproductive behavior of the animal has actually given us some good news to allow this fishing to continue at the level at which it is presently. There may be no other place on earth where the squid is so highly prized for something other than its value on a menu. So here we have a live uh, nerve. We actually have removed the membrane, so we're not looking at the, um, the intact nerve. We've taken away the membrane, and therefore we can see inside filaments and particles moving on those filaments. That's pretty incredible. That's the right side. The Gemma's collecting trip is a success, netting about three dozen squid just the right size for lab studies. The squid population here seems large enough to satisfy seafood lovers, and even some scientists with a hunger for research. Oh, I have a great admiration for these animals, but I do like to eat them as well. Thank you.